We've got to start with rising Treasury yields. We're going on eight weeks in a row now. Started the year with the 10-year below 1%. We're now at 175. I know you and other, other Fed members have said you're not particularly worried about it because it doesn't look disorderly. When would you get concerned about the move we're seeing in bond yields? Well, I think market functioning would be the thing that would make you nervous if the, you know, we're the fiscal agent for the Treasury. And at some level, if you weren't seeing the Treasury uh, market functioning, uh, you'd have some concern. But most of the days it's increased, it looks to me like it has something to do with optimism on the economy, whether that's vaccine rollout uh, or fiscal stimulus um, or higher inflation expectations. Are you, are you worried about it causing a disruption in, in the markets and in financial conditions overall, places like the housing market, which has really been humming along on, rise, on lower rates? Well, there's a, a lot of... Uh, momentum in the economy right now. I think we're going to have a very strong summer, a very strong uh, fall as uh, pent-up demand comes back in the economy, as vaccines roll out. And uh, I think the economy is going to be strong enough uh, to take somewhat higher rates. Do you think, therefore, given, as you said, that you think summer and fall are going to be very strong, inflation will jump quite aggressively for those periods of time, even if you think it's then going to settle back down afterwards? I think we will see price pressure this year. Uh, as you suggest, the first thing we're going to see is the deflationary reads of last spring roll off. And so the 12-month numbers will go up just because uh, the baseline changes. And so that will happen. By the way, uh, we had very strong price pressure in the fall. And so by the time we round over that, you know, that'll get normalized. Um, but you can't, you know, help but hear uh, these supply chain issues people are having filling their stores. I really do think, I'll speak for myself, um, you know, the desire to get back into the economy is quite strong. And I think that kind of demand will lead to price pressure. Um, as you suggest, though, uh, the fact that we'll see price pressure over six months is not the same thing as saying we're going to see inflation over the next several years. President Barkin, just want to play for you a, a clip from Chair Powell's news conference just two days ago on this topic of inflation. Here's how he characterized it. Inflation expectations are strongly anchored around 2 percent. We know that inflation dynamics do evolve over time. There was a time when, when inflation went up, it would stay up. And, and that time is not now. That hasn't been the case for some decades. Is that your view? That, that, uh, do you feel confident in saying that any inflation that we do see rising will just not last? Because uh, it, it doesn't work that way impossible. anymore? It's impossible to predict the future, but, but what I think is there are these long-term disinflationary trends. Think of them as headwind. Um, global access to labor and global access to product would be a good example. Uh, technology, which allows you to check prices on your phone, is another example. The power of big retailers like Walmart or Home Depot and their ability to negotiate strongly with people who might want to raise price. All of those things have been working against inflation in addition to uh, what the Fed and other central banks around the world have done, which is you know, stable and consistent messaging uh, around inflation uh, targeting. And that means, I think, that you've got very stable expectations. I'd note that inflation expectations have come back toward our target, but don't seem to be uh, moving out of line uh, in the markets. And as I talk to executives, um, you know, they may see short-term price pressure, but as I probe them on the question of, well, your normal routine is a 2% increase every January. Are you thinking about changing that to 4 I don't hear them saying that. President Barkin, um, you, you mentioned uh, that you're not too, too worried about the level of treasuries in, in the short or medium term. What if credit spreads did gap up? I mean, clearly they haven't yet, but if they did, would that be a worry for you? Well, uh, I have to say credit's been one of the really positive stories uh, of this economy. Um, you might expect in a normal downturn, uh, significant upticks and defaults, both uh, personal and commercial. We certainly saw that in 2008. And you just haven't seen that uh, the same way now. And so, you know, to me, credit spreads ought to be related to credit performance. So far, uh, I'm encouraged. Just for those, President Bargain, that see the Federal Reserve estimates for growth going to 6.5% this year, which was above consensus and, and a really good, strong story for the U.S. economy, and inflation going well above 2%, and wondering, why isn't it the time now to be talking about 
tapering, the emergency stimulus that's in the economy, what would you say? Well, uh, we've given very clear guidance that's in line with our new framework. Uh, that guidance says, uh, and you could play another tape from Chair Powell if you wanted to, it has to do with maximum employment. It has to do with uh, hitting the 2% inflation target in a sense that you could moderately overshoot for some time in an effort to return expectations uh, closer to 2%. And when we hit those, and similarly on asset purchase, when we hit substantial further progress, then I'm ready to taper and I'm ready to move rates. But um, I'd like to do that when we hit those uh, targets, which I hope and think we've communicated pretty clearly. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.